Hello, Christian Livingstone here, and uh, what I'm doing today is a little video clip uh, on behalf of the Everlast Forum where I uh, sometimes go and make comments and give feedbacks, and uh, recently I kind of mucked up the forum a little bit with a, a thread that uh, uh, had to do with this uh, CK Worldwide uh, TIG Torch Hand Amp Troll, and uh, you know, I use the uh, Everlast welder here. It's a new welder. I, I dig it. Uh, it's AC DC. It's digital. And this uh, this is a brand new product from CK Worldwide. It's not uh, uh, an Everlast product, but you know, as uh, TIG equipment goes and torches go, uh, you know, people like to upgrade and modify and do things. And I wanted to try this uh, unit and. Uh, I found that uh, CK Worldwide really wasn't marketing it beyond, you know, the Millers, the Lincolns, the Aesops. There was a, a few uh, uh, units that they uh, marketed it for, and, uh, you know, the uh, Everlast uses a 7-pin uh, Panasonic connector on their foot pedals and uh, TIG torches, uh, you know, contactor switches and stuff, and so, you know, CK didn't uh, have those, and, uh, you know, then you got to consider the uh, potentiometer values and are they compatible with the machines and uh, lo and behold no it didn't look like uh, CK was doing that for the Everlast units. The, the latest uh, crop of Everlast units both in their uh, analog welders and their digital welders are 47k uh, uh, ohm uh, resistance uh, pots and uh, Apparently these uh, digital ones, you know, aren't picky. They can, uh, you know, deal with just about anything you throw at them. I, I don't know about the analog ones. So, and I, I really don't know what the pot is in here, but it may not matter for the digital. But there was one uh, uh, authorized uh, seller and uh, of uh, these uh, CK products, this newest CK uh steady grip and uh, basically all it is is a hand amp troll. It's a slide uh, amp troll. You don't have to use the foot pedal and uh, amp trolls, uh, hand amp trolls aren't anything new and uh, particularly revolutionary but it was kind of an innovation that CK did put this handle on it and it really made it like a pistol style action. And, you know, that changes the whole way you hold a tick torch. Normally you hold a tick torch like a pencil and, you know, if there's a button on top and sometimes there's a rotary dial for hand amp trolls and, you know, maybe they're not very optimum compared to a foot pedal. And so uh, I thought this, when I saw there's a, a guy named Mr. Tig and uh, he was the distributor uh, of this where I bought this uh, particular one from uh, his place called uh, TIG Depot and uh, you know if you do a search you'll find it and he's the only one that was uh, selling these with that seven pin connector and you know it wasn't perfectly clear whether it was going to be you know uh, able to be used on, on my or other Everlast units but he did a video he's a famous guy uh, uh, and uh, uh, TIG time, if you've ever seen welding videos online, uh, TIG times are very pervasive and he's a bright guy and uh, really gives some down and detailed uh, uh, TIG welding tips and very technical and, and very informative and helpful. And so uh, uh, I went ahead and ordered from his site because, you know, it wasn't perfectly clear whether this was being uh, marketed by him uh, for the Everlast units or for the uh, longevity units, but apparently it is. It's interchangeable if it's got this seven pin uh, connector because uh, Mr. Tig modifies uh, welders. He'll take an Everlast uh, machine and uh, paint it up and uh, do some upgrades and stuff and it'll they'll be Mr. Tig approved machines. And he did the uh, uh, Everlast uh, 200 dB unit, which was a Mr. Tig approved model, and that's what uh, he uh, uh, lists as it's being uh, uh, 
capable of, uh, of being applied to that. So uh, I thought, well, you know, the 200 dB has uh, uh, a 47K pot, so does my digital uh, uh, unit here, the 210 EXT. So I'll go ahead and order it and just, you know, see how it goes. Because Mr. Tig was using the uh, 325 uh, EXT, which is, you know, like a big brother unit to this one. So I thought, oh, sure, it'll be... It'll be uh, simple, so I, I went ahead and ordered it, got it here, but I was a little apprehensive, you know, I, I kind of didn't know, because apparently I'm the first adopter, you know, outside the, the, the seller himself, and so um, I plugged it in, turned the machine on, and, uh, you know, the readout read 805 amps, so I got a little nervous and scared, and I just shut it down, and emailed back to the uh, TIG Depot and the staff there said, oh yeah, yeah, no, you can't, uh, the 210 EXT doesn't, you know, take that and, you know, CK doesn't really develop for, for that model or this line uh, of welders yet, so uh, gee whiz, uh, you know, send it back. And so I did, but then I went back and I watched the uh, uh, Mr. TIG video and because it was a, a 325 EXT, you know, virtually the same as mine. They got the same pot resistance, the same kind of kind of everything, except the uh, output is a little higher on the uh, 325. So I watched the video again, and you know, just to see if I was hallucinating or something. But no, even on Mr. Tint's video, when he uh, tops out the torch on the slide, that very briefly it read uh, 805 amps. Now I thought, okay. Okay, so that was a nothing. I was, you know, needlessly overly cautious. So I sent uh, Mr. Tig and the staff at uh, Tig Depot uh, an email, and I said, "Hey, wait, I, I, you know, sent that back to you, and blah blah blah, and uh, you know, but I rewatched the video you put out, and uh, you know, yours did the same thing. So please do me a favor and uh, do us both a favor and send that back, and uh, I'll be happy to pay any added shipment." Uh, for the trouble I'm causing, and uh, you know, I'm kind of going through this on the Everlast forum too, because uh, there's people who are, are curious about this. You know, I don't know. Uh, you know, some people just aren't comfortable with uh, in certain circumstances, and they're just looking for an effective uh, hand amp troll solution. And really, I think this is going to be it. This is probably going to be my go-to torch. I've got a an aftermarket uh, North American produced. Uh, upgraded uh, foot pedal and uh, you know I, I don't use it with my feet uh, but I, I'll sometimes use it in, in uh, spots between my legs and it's a real it's a real nice foot pedal I do like it but uh, you know for a couple of reasons uh, I'm probably going to use this uh, mostly and uh, I'll show it to you I uh, ground off a little piece of metal here and uh, I'll fire up the machine just to show you that it works and maybe show you the uh, front panel where, you know, you set the dial and you can see the action slide and the amps move just according to the limit that you set on the, the face of the machine. So, you know, and I'll, maybe I'll post this on my uh, YouTube uh, channel and then uh, uh, place that link on the uh, Everlast uh, website in that thread where I've been mucking it up saying, yeah, I bought it, I, I didn't think it would work, I sent it back, and then they sent it back, and here I am showing you that, yeah, I, I uh, was needlessly uh, uh, overcautious and that, uh, you know, come on in, the water's fine for Everlast users who want to try this. Now, these babies are uh, surprisingly expensive. They're about... Uh, uh, I think uh, Tig Depot has the, the cheapest ones, and uh, you know, hats off to Mr. Tig. He's uh, out there uh, as a source, uh, creating uh, you know these avenues for people to uh, make them applicable to their units. And I, I don't see anybody else doing it. CK isn't doing it, so I don't know if Mr. Tig is uh, you know getting these from uh, CK and then just wiring up uh, uh, the plugs for for the users out there. It, it, Apparently so, and I'm glad he does. But uh, his uh, uh, price on these is uh, 239 bucks, free shipping, no tax online. So, uh, you know, thank you, Mr. Tig, for doing that and for putting those videos out there that are very helpful to people. But 
this is not so much, you know, as a demo for, uh, you know, the CK uh, unit. It's, it's more, uh, uh, you know, to demonstrate the fact that it does work on the Everlast line, most of it. I'm certain it's not going to be uh, uh, able to be used on every unit because some of the Everlast uh, uh, products, especially the early ones, earlier ones, use uh, 22K pots and I don't know what other resistance uh, pots they use, but, you know, if this is a, a higher pot rating, you know, you could neck down those uh, resistance levels with a, a resistor and you could probably, you know, if there's on a, a pot, uh, I'm not an expert, but uh, I believe there's a high, low, and mid uh, uh, wire. There's only three wires that really run that slide action. Now, there's two more wires that run the start and stop. And at the very beginning of the action of this, you can feel that little indent nub kind of break free. And that is the on off. There's a, a two wire into that portion. But then the slide, it begins uh, low, mid, and high. So the two outside wires uh, have that resistance of the uh, 47K. And so you can put, uh, I believe, uh, a resistor on the high and low wire and bring, you know, pot down to what's more applicable to your unit. So if you have one of those 22K units, you could probably uh, modify something like this to get it where you want it uh, and it would work effectively. But, uh, and you could probably even put those two little little resistors in, in the barrel with this fitting here. You wouldn't have to, you know, cut into here, or go search around in there. You could just, because these pins are numbered, the uh, seven pins, uh, I forget which one's the high and low, but it might be like four and six or something like that. In the Everlast literature, you'll find the pinout diagram for what those are, what the, the, the three uh, pot wires are and which one is the high and low. So, you know, you can just pluck it out and on, on the uh, connector. They're numbered if you look real close or get a magnifying glass. So, you know, there's a, a lot of things you can do, but uh, I didn't know if this would work. And uh, now I do. And, uh, you know, I'll fire up the machine, show you the uh, face, and uh, run a little bead and call it done. And say, come on in, the water's fine. You know, I got to, so to speak, dip my toe in it and ran back like a little sissy because I thought, oh, uh, I'm afraid. It says 805 on that readout. But I just had it all the way back. It wasn't in the start position. And, you know, maybe it had to reset and clear. But... When I plugged it in, turned on the machine, it was all the way back, and it just threw up that number, and, uh, you know, I've since turned it on and uh, uh, ran that up and back, and, oh, it's it's beautifully, it's smooth, it's, it's nice, so uh, let's do that. Let me uh, get uh, some gear on, and uh, we'll fire it up and just show you and recap, you know. Okay, so I have the machine powered up. I've uh, uh, set the uh, panel to uh, 100 amps uh, at the uh, uh, steady grip uh, hand amp troll uh, max. And as you can see, it's in the forward most position. And what I notice is I do get some uh, anomalous kind of uh, figures and when they occur. Just like, uh, you know, initially I, I was a little... Uh, uh, uncertain about you know the meaning of that uh, it still kind of shows that uh, anomaly and uh, I don't know if uh, that's what's going on when you're using foot pedals and other amp trolls it did show on Mr. Tig's uh, uh, demo of the uh, CK unit itself on his 325 uh, EXT so I'm thinking it, it really doesn't matter I've uh, just now uh, uh, lit up and uh, burned a, a quick uh, uh, bead with uh, no filler and I'll do that again I, I just ground off a little piece of metal got rid of the mill scale so we'll uh, fire it up but uh, uh, just to first show you that anomaly I'll slide the action down and let you watch the display that's going on see it lights off and starts off but then it jumps up to that 805 but you know as you're using this you actually feel the uh, increase of the amp so you know while you're welding you're not staring at this anyway so I'm gonna just uh, go ahead and uh, demo it or show 
show it and uh, we'll talk about it after. Okay, so here we are. We've still got it set at 100 amps. Uh, I'm using a, uh, a number 9 torch. It's kind of a lightweight torch, but we probably won't linger uh, anywhere near that 100 amps for too long. And uh, there's kind of a, a skimpy uh, electrode in here. It's a 16 inch, inch uh, uh, 1 16th inch uh, uh, electrode. It's lanthanated 2%. And uh, the metal is. Uh, 1 8 inch or 10 gauge and uh, you know it's just mild steel I got a little filler rod here if we want to fill it but I first want to just actuate the slide and kind of describe it the heat input as I go regardless of what the panel says on the machine I want uh, you know to demonstrate for myself and you can do it right here along with me this is this is it happening right now to get a sense of that 100 amps. You know, the start amps on this is very low on uh, DC. It's three or five amps. So this has a, a very uh, light start up if needs be. I didn't set any start or end amps. So I don't think there's any upslope or downslope. None of that stuff is gonna bug us too much. We can all do it manually with the slide. But there's a little pre-flow and post-flow. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Let's just see if I can feel, and you can see that 100 amps, uh, depending on where I am in that uh, whole slide action. Okay, I've, I've lit up. I'm guessing I'm probably a tenth of the way into the slide action. I'm creeping up now, and as you can see, the uh, arc is lighting up. Uh, uh, Puddle starting, very small, and I'm keep creeping up. The puddle's just doing fine, but let me go ahead and crank it. Now I'm at top amps, and it feels like 100 amps. I'm just moving that puddle, not adding any filler, and it's, uh, it's very nice. Very nice. You got it. Okay, now let me ease off. It's about half the amps. And I'll just trail off. Right there, do a little post flow. Let me tell you, that is just what you'd expect with the 100 amps set back there. So I'm going to call it good. I'm not going to worry if. You know, there's some anomalies on the uh, panel because uh, maybe the pot is not, you know, precisely the one to make that anomaly go away because it's not anomalous down here where you're doing the work. It's, it's brilliant. It's really uh, surprisingly nice. So I'll show you the puddle just to make sure it's really nothing there, but... Uh, There we are. No filler rod, just moving that puddle along, and uh, it felt very good. And you can see the arc is certainly uh, uh, stable and, and brilliant on those uh, Everlast machines, especially the digital ones. I, I dig them. The only other machine I've uh, had uh, previously was a, a, a DC uh, TIG welder, a basic. Uh, TIG welder. I, I didn't even use a foot pedal or amp troll or anything on it. didn't come with one. I, I just set the amps about where I thought they uh, needed to be and that was, uh, that was good. So that's, a, I think, a good way to learn because I just taught myself TIG welding. I haven't done a whole lot of it, but over a period of five years with that uh, other machine, and I still have it. Uh, I've done a lot of groovy projects and if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll You'll see some of them, a uh, stainless steel exhaust system on a truck, uh, the electric hand cycle, and a trailer uh, uh, with a pretty cool uh, uh, modification to it uh, for a Harley Davidson trike. Uh, uh, my neighbor pulls it behind him and he wanted to have some uh, things done, so uh, that was a cool project. So anyway, 
I'm just going to pass that along that for uh, the Everlast people, the Everlast users like myself, and it's a cool little community uh, of Everlast users because uh, Everlast has that forum where you can get a lot of support. Uh, and, you know, from some of the staff at uh, Everlast, they're on the forums too, but other users, you know, kind of help each other. And uh, this did become a topic because some people, for whatever reason, uh, you know, like me, are kind of looking for some, you know, different kind of options that they can use for certain reasons, certain circumstances, certain projects. And uh, I, I tell you, this is probably going to be my go-to torch. You know, I've got other things uh, uh, that I can use, but uh, and most welders will. They won't just have one torch. You know, they might have a 26 series torch for the more heat input, you know, because these little torches get hot and I'll probably actually change this out. This is a number nine. I'll probably change this out to a 17 uh, flex head because, you know, any any typical torch holding style in the pencil style gives a pretty good, uh, you know, place for the torch tip to hit if you're moving like this. And this approximates that pretty well too. Even though it's a completely different way of holding a torch, it puts puts your torch tip right about in the flat spot or a flat piece of work you're, you're doing. Now, this has got a stubby torch on it, so if I had a little more typical torch, and there's actually a, a gas lens in here too, it would lay down a little closer, a little better. So when I get that, uh, flex head torch. Uh, I've ordered one. It was about 15 bucks. It may even be coming directly from China. God bless them. And uh, so the uh, 17 torches are a little bigger and uh, I don't use the stubby lens on the other one. I use a typical gas lens on the other one. So it'll hang down a little further and then the ability to flex the head wherever I want it. This thing will be quite nice. I'm really thinking so. So, uh, yeah, and, you know, another point about this, that since you don't ha uh, handle the torch in the same way, you're really not touching the torch at all, you know, the heat of the torch won't be a bother so much. It, maybe that on a little torch like this, it might cause you to burn up the collets and stuff, but, uh, you know, you won't feel it, you know, <laughs> which is a good thing. You know, you can just roll on, roll on by and burn your torch. <laughs> No, no. But yeah, so it just might be a little more comfortable uh, uh, because you won't be feeling the heat to, to speak of. And uh, like I said, the, uh, the position of this new configuration is, is surprisingly good. It's just really uh, surprisingly good. So this will probably be my go-to torch for a while. At least I'll, I'll demo it and, and enjoy it for a little while and, you know, for some reason I don't like it, I'll go back to what I was doing. So there you have it, the uh, CK Steady Grip Hand Amp Troll is usable on Everlast units. Now, you know, I'm not telling you it's going to be usable on every unit, but any of the uh, Everlast uh, welders that have that uh, 47K pot and in your, your manual, your literature, you know, Everlast is uh, gone out of their way to let you know what the, uh, the pot value is and the actual pinouts on, on the connectors and stuff. So, you know, you'll know if you've got a machine, you'll know or you'll be able to do. So don't cry about, oh, I don't know what kind of pot I have in mind. Uh, if you've got the 47K pot or 50K pot, uh, I don't know if they use those, but uh, you know, the foot pedal uh, I got for this is a 50k pot, and this takes a 47k pot, so it doesn't it doesn't wince, you know, 47, 50, it's, it's all good for especially these digital units, but uh, this is marketed also for the uh, analog units, which the 200 dB takes the 47k pot, and I believe a lot of other uh, Everlast TIG welders are using the 47k uh, pot for their you know, uh, foot pedals and amp troller stuff. So, you know, come on in. The water's fine. And, uh, you know, I'll let you know if, 
suddenly there's a, a problem, but I, I don't think so. I, I think, uh, you know, it's good to go. Mr. Tig sells them, and uh, apparently he's the only one. And if you go to Tig Depot, uh, you know, you'll find this. And uh, maybe I ought to point that out, that uh, the actual one, here's the, uh, the number, and uh, you can see it shows for a longevity unit there, but the number is... Uh, SGACV-25-1-LG7. Oh, here it's, it has the pot value on this baby. This will be interesting. Uh, steady grip amp control 25K. Wow. So this is a uh, this is a 25K pot and this this unit is handling it very well, and uh, uh, Tig Depot markets this 27. Uh, can I say 27k? No, 25k. This 25k pot for the other analog unit, the uh, 200 dv, and it's it takes a 47. So these uh, 25k pots are working fine on the Everlast, apparently. Uh, 47k uh, units, whether they're analog or digital. But, you know, that might be the, the only drawback is you get that anomalous uh, readout. But, uh, you know, while you're uh, uh, actually using it, you don't notice that. So, so I'm liking it. And, uh, you know, let me know if uh, you're on the uh, Everlast uh, forum and you buy one of these and say, yeah, it works on my machine too. Because, you know, everybody there will, you know, undoubtedly uh, like to know that, you know, if they're a little bit curious about using that. So, thank you very much. I'm going to quit uh, babbling on about it. And, uh, you know, I'll probably leave uh, one last uh, post or uh, thread or something about uh, how this turned out and uh, maybe even... Uh, uh, link to this uh, video segment here so that you know they can actually see it in action and know I'm not just you know hallucinating and stuff but yeah it really works and uh, you know and if you do do have a problem uh, the people at uh, Tick Depot are, are very good to work with I got uh, direct emails back from Mr. Tig himself and you know I guess it's a, a family business and uh, uh, the staff there was very nice but initially they said no yeah you're right uh, you know this this won't work on the 210 EXT you know a CK worldwide just uh, you know it doesn't want to develop for that so apparently it doesn't matter Mr. T uh, just uh, came up with the solution wired it up and uh, is selling it and they are working so that's off to Mr. Tick again. So that's it. I'm going to uh, conclude this and call it a success. The CK Steady Grip on Everlast units in general work good.